I'm going to show you how to make this image look like this one. So first, let's cover some things. If you want to adjust the vibrance of an image in the menu bar, I want you to go to Select, Image, Adjustments, Vibrance. Go up to Image, Adjustments, and choose Vibrance. The Vibrance slider affects the intensity of the colors. It has the strongest effect on the muted colors in the image. The saturation slider increases the color intensity of all colors in the image. And then just click OK when you're done. Hundred percent. Do you see how it didn't really make our eyes bleed? Because it brightened up the things that weren't already super bright. Now here's a saturation slider. Now that makes your eyes bleed, right? That that's pushed it to the intensity where it doesn't even look real anymore. So that's where you want to kind of make a balance of what you've done. And if you forget where you came from, just toggle on that preview icon on and off. So the vibrance adjustment is really a good one to use when you don't want to come up with these crazy oversaturated images. You just want to boost the colors that are a little flat, like that red's a little flat. So this pulls them up without oversaturating everything. Now, when I click OK, we all have learned this is a destructive edit. The good thing is if I click Cancel, I can do the same edit over here with the Vibrance Adjustment layer. Now, if I want to adjust the hue and saturation of the colors of an image, I will go up to the menu bar, select Image, Adjustments, Hue and Saturation. And then I'd experiment by adjusting the hue, saturation, and lightness sliders. And these changes will affect all the colors in the image. So Image, Adjustment, Hue and Saturation. So the hue is gonna shift the colors of everything over the entire image, which is really powerful for some artistic or graphic design control sometimes. And then I can pull the saturation down or I can pull it way up. I can make the lightness just to fade it back a bit or make it a little dark. It all depends on what you're using it for as to what it is that you want to do. But again, remember this is destructive, but we know that we can come over here and add a hue saturation adjustment layer, have all the same controls and forever editability. Thing to remember, is the hue slider changes the colors in an image. The saturation slider affects the intensity of the colors in an image. The lightness slider affects the brightness of colors in an image. So now let's make this image look like this one. So essentially I wanna crop it to a square. So I'm gonna choose the crop tool here. I'm gonna go up to ratio and choose one to one square. And then I will pull on this lower right corner. And I wanna be careful because I don't want any of this wood floor. I find that distracting. I don't want to see underneath the couch. I want to come into the couch. I want to come as close to her as I can, but I don't want her to be dead centered. So now I'm going to click inside and drag around. Trying, trying for rule of thirds as much as I can without cropping her elbow. I think that looks weird. So it's a balance. I don't want to be too close to the bottom of her shoe. I need a little negative space for breathing room. I think something like that. That's kind of a nice balance of everything I can do. So I'm going to click Enter to lock that in. Command or Control Zero to fill the screen. And what is it I want to change? Well, we're going to change a lot, right? I definitely want this wall to be redder. So let's come over and add a Vibrance adjustment layer. Come down and just drag that Vibrance slider up. So that red looks really nice. I like the direction it went. I think it went a little bit too far on her skin tone. So I want to hit B for the brush or select it right over here. I'm going to hit D for default colors or tap the X key to get black into my foreground because I want to paint on this white mask. Because essentially I want to remove some of that vibrance effect from her face and around the edge of her hair. So again, I look at my options bar. I'm at normal. Last time I was here is at 40%. So I'm just going to hover over the word and drag to the left to lower that percentage. A scrubby slider is when you hover over a word and your cursor changes to a left or right pointing arrow and you just drag it back and forth to vary the opacity. I'm gonna say I wanna reduce it by 50%. Left bracket key to make my brush a little smaller. And I'm gonna paint over her skin color and just over the edge of her skin. And again, I'm just wanting to subdue how it made her skin tone and I'm gonna pass again. So I'm now doing 50% of 50% because it kind of works together like that. Okay, now looking at this, I'm thinking I'm gonna to need to make some adjustments. Command zero to fit in screen. 
So I'm going to go ahead and go back to my background layer, select it, hit Command or Control J, because I want to keep that original. I want to see where I've come from. And now I'm on the background copy. And I think the first thing I want to do is I want to get rid of some of this wall stuff. I'm not going to use the quick selection tool. Instead, I'm going to come down to the spot healing brush, select it, right bracket key to make my, my brush a little bigger. And I'm just going to come and click on a lot of these white water spots or stains, whatever I find that's particularly visually distracting that's keeping me out of the moment. I mean, I like the distressed texture in the background. I'm not trying to get rid of that. I don't like this line right here. I'm just gonna hold the space bar, grab it and move it up a little. I'm gonna try to paint this and see what it does. Hey, it didn't do bad. A lot of times the spot healing brush won't do a great job toward edges. But that did a really nice job. Space bar to pan down, left bracket key to make a smaller brush. I don't like that little line right there. Okay, I've gotten rid of the bulk of the distracting watermarks, which I, I like a lot better. Command zero to fit in screen. So now what do I wanna do? I wanna change the color of the shoes. And you've already watched the video how to manually select and paint with a color blend mode with the color you've chosen. But I wanna show you an even easier way. So while I'm here on this layer, I'm gonna go up to select and choose color range. And then I'm going to come in the image, my cursor changes to an eyedropper and I'm just going to click. And you see this little black box? That's my image, and that white area is what I've selected. So I'm gonna hold down the shift key. Notice how my cursor has a plus icon beside it now. And I'm just gonna kind of drag over everything that's that color and see how it selected all of that shoe for me. Maybe I need a little bit of this reflection in the couch. The rest of the shoe right here. I need this part of the shoe, this part of the shoe. I need the dark part and the light parts of the front of the shoe. Now I don't need it to get her leg, so I'm gonna hold the alter option key and that puts a minus beside my cursor. And you see as I'm painting over it, it's getting rid of it up here. You may have to drag your fuzziness sliders and your range. So the range says, how far around the image can we look at? And you wanna keep it pretty restricted here. And if it's not restricting enough, just check localized color clusters. You see how it's kind of getting the same tones up in the wall, but I'm willing it to just select the colors where I'm clicking. So localized color cluster does a great job with that. See, I pretty much just have the shoes. Once I get it about to where I want, I'm gonna click okay. So now I have an active selection on my shoes. It looks like I didn't quite get everything. I'm gonna hold the command and space bar so that I can zoom in. Space bar only so I can pan up. because I really wanna fill my screen with the shoes. You see where I've missed stuff? Now I can come back with the quick selection tool right here, left bracket key, and I can say, how did that do? That did pretty good. Hold down the Alt option or Alt key. I wanna get rid of her leg there. I want all of this orange. I want all of that orange. I want all of that orange. And I want all of this orange. I'm gonna paint all through here. So I need all of that. Alt or option, because I don't need her fingernail. Don't need your fingernail. Paint right back across. It's a learning algorithm. So the more passes you make, the better job it's going to do. Okay, I think I've roughly done a pretty, pretty decent job. Now I want this mask to be a little soft, but I'm gonna do that later. What I want to do is change the color of the shoes to green. Oop, there's a little bit over here. So instead of me hand painting this, how about I let Photoshop do the work for me? Wait, there's a bonus tip. When you choose any of the adjustment layers with an active selection, the adjustment layer will save the selection in the mask that comes with it based on the hue and saturation adjustment layer. So I'm just gonna click hue and saturation and watch what happens because I have an active selection. You can see the black and white moving dots. They're called marching ants because it looks like ants marching all the way around and it's marching around the thing that's selected. Whenever you add any adjustment layer with an active selection, it's gonna create a mask for you automatically with that selection. Watch what happens. I'll click that. Do you see how it just made a mask for me on the hue and saturation adjustment layer? If I hold the alt or option key and click on that mask, well, that's the mask. That's what it just made for me. So now this means when I, now right now in the properties panel, I'm only seeing adjustments for the mask, right? So I need to activate my hue and saturation by clicking on it, making it most selected. And I'm coming up to the hue because I want to change the color. Remember, I want to change it to green. So essentially, I just drag one direction. You can choose any color, but for this, I want you to choose green. And I didn't see my green, so let's go back this direction. There's some green. 
Now that's kind of a bright fluorescent green, so I probably need to bring my lightness down a little bit. Well, that looks muddy in my whites because I included my whites. Maybe pull the saturation down a touch. I think that's a nice green. Let me hit Command or Control Zero to go back full screen. Yeah, that's that's a really nice green. Now watch this. If I wanted to make the shoes themselves a touch darker, if I hold the Command key while I click on this layer mask, it's going to reload the selection of just those shoes. Now if I add a Levels Adjustment layer, it's going to give me the same mask, and it's going to allow me to pull the intensity of the shoes down. Look at that. So now they don't really jump out at you. If I pull down this white output slider, so the shoes are green, but they're not so bright, right? Let me click that eyeball on and off. Do you see how it looks like they're a bit overexposed? Remember, the brightest area of an image is what's going to draw the viewer's attention. And I want the shoes to be prominent, but not from overexposure, right? So that's why I made that additional levels adjustment after I made the color adjustment. So I enjoy where this is going. Command zero to make sure I'm fit in the screen. I'm actually going to hit command minus to shrink it just a tiny bit. So I get kind of a stepped back look at it. I think I'd like to make the red darker. So how could we do that? Well, if we go back to that background copy layer, let me pull this up. If I go back to this background copy layer, try select color range and say select, maybe not localized. Hold down the shift key. Okay, it's doing a pretty good job. I mean, not great, but pretty good. Say I do not want any of the face. There's a lot of red in the face, so that's the problem. And I can also click inside here. I don't have to click in the image. Okay, I think that's going to mostly get me there. I'm going to click OK because it is a mask, so I can paint on my mask. And I'll add a Levels Adjustment layer, which is going to create the mask that I just made. Remember, white reveals, black conceals. So that means if it's white, it's being shown. So the red wall is what's being shown. So any adjustment I make is really only going to happen on that red wall. Watch. I'm going to make it darker. Look at that. See how I just made that a little darker? Let me pull the dark tones in just a touch. Now I want to make sure I don't like oversaturate, but I'm, I'm just making things subtly darker. And then if I want to come back for a bit of a spotlight effect on her, but from the background, I'll hit B because I want to paint with black. Right bracket key to make a bigger brush. Make sure it's super soft. Yep, my hardness is zero. And I'm going to click once, and I'm at 50%. Click again, make a bigger brush. Click again, click again, click again. Remember, I'm not affecting her. I'm just affecting the background behind her to kind of soften this effect. There we go. I think that looks great. So save this and go watch the next video. If you like this video, make sure you whack it, smack it, and crack a lack it. Yes! Hey. What are you still doing here? It's over. Actually, all kidding aside, I hope this video helped. And if it did, consider subscribing. I like subscribers. That's awesome. What? You just took one in the jugular, man. Huh. Whoa. Yes! <laughs> God. Oh my God, I did. This is hey, you stayed to the end. You know what that means. You're awesome. I'm talking about you. Now get out of here.